neural link, which is the note G, which can uh, connect to a neural transmitter, which has to be some form of chip or operate chip inside of their body or implant. Now, the when analyzing these, and when the victims are holding the device, those radio frequencies are getting captured into that recording because they're on the invisible spectrum. We don't see them, but they're still being transmitted to mm -hmm. us in order to affect us, especially with the voice-to-skull technology systems. So when I bring them up, I have to amplify them to an audible level. And I capture a lot of the radio communications from the drones and the satellite systems, along with the military and the government projects that they are doing. Like in Allison's case, she's Project Genesis. She also has graphene in her body, and I know they're, they're manipulating the heavy metals in there, along with the amino acids and the acrylic acids as well, and doing MNRA and DNA manipulation processing. So I am listening basically to the personal area network systems of their, and their body, along with their heart monitoring systems as well. I could sometimes capture the heartbeats of the victims from their computer systems being transferred. I could capture them uplinking to the satellite systems and to their locations. I know they're using hybrid cloud services with that as well. Okay. Um, now, my portion of the forensics, I could identify the weapon systems because the criminals are actually purchasing them. Oh yeah, there's a patent on them. I think there are three, I've got three patent numbers uh, of people, well, you know, that you can buy them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was interesting because we explained to the lawyer that actually <coughs> some of the weapons that you can purchase them. Yeah. You know? And um, he was like, well, can I have examples of this? You know, uh, like, or uh, I think uh, some are, can even be rep uh, reproduced. You know, I think I, if you, you could make out of a microwave uh, uh, a right. weapon, you know, theoretically. So I think... Uh, the, the, the access to these weapons is more and more easy, I think, from what I understand. And, you know, he wanted examples of this, for example. Like, uh, in, in my report, that you what weapons you use, which kind of uh, injuries they could cause. Yeah, and I know that was one of the questions you had. Yeah. Go ahead, Alison. Just in the report, I apologies. Yeah. No, um, no. Okay. Um, so in my, my report, for example, uh, one of the main sort of components of it is the fact that I'm being live streamed on the deep web and there are people logging in to pay to either attack and or watch me. Those would be your live torture chambers or red rooms? Yeah. So that's one of the main sort of things that's going on in it, isn't it? Yes. So this is mainly done for, I um, understand, well, trafficking purposes, human trafficking, mm -hmm. and also uh, to test these weapons. But I think I once heard a video of yours where you said that actually everything was known in the 70s already. About 50s. the 50s. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, about I mean, I've traced back this technology uh, since 1840. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> there are. Oh gosh, there, there are many reasons why people are targeted. Like a mobile electrophone. Very many reasons. Um, it could be um, if <clears throat> you are in one nation and you wanted to occupy the nation next door. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> An easy way to do it would be to, let, let's say if um, Indonesia wanted to take over Australia. Mm -hmm. Simple example. One of the ways, and there are many, many ways you can do this. One of the ways would be <clears throat> to just target the people who are susceptible in Australia with... Uh, 
certainly microwaves, but with the different pulse frequencies, Indonesia could just microwave lots and lots of people in Australia, mm -hmm. but people are all different. So what works on one person will not work on another. Mm -hmm. And women are, they have 13 different uh, responses to microwaving the men. So you, you need to decide. In addition? Going, sorry? In addition. In addition <clears throat> to men, yeah. <clears throat> so, but what does go on is teams from one country will go into another country um, and, and we're talking hundreds of thousands of people mm -hmm. and uh, that's being microwaved um, and they could find a, a general frequency that will do most of the women and a general frequency that would do most of the men. Would that be through the uh, like uh, electrical stimulation or frequency <clears throat> control? Well, I'll, I'll come on to that. Um, it could be just to target uh, pregnant women. Right. Which I capture a lot of. <clears throat> yeah. I've, I've yeah. written a couple Miscarriages of papers on that. Yeah. <laughs> it could be to target pregnant women. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, I wrote, I don't know if I sent you my zygote paper, I think so. the zygote paper from... The, uh, no Hiding Place. No, no Hiding Place, hiding yeah. Place for, uh, <coughs> now, we're in, using it at the moment, it was in a public inquiry yeah. that uh, Ikatora is uh, responding now, to. We're using your paper. Yeah, with, with this one that uh, I wrote... It's very interesting, this one. Um, <laughs> you may not want to kill everybody, but you may want to have them... Uh, disabled or disabled mm -hmm. or mentally disformed somehow um, and in the, the, the no hiding place I listed all of the different growth stages for the 39 mm -hmm. weeks yeah, of the baby <laughs> and you can mm -hmm. target if you wish to any one of those mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, the, you, you might want to bankrupt the country, but not kill everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when you've bankrupted a country, you can move in, in hordes of immigrants and take over the factories, the national health systems, the transport systems, and um, before very long, and in, in the terms we're thinking of, um, the terms we're thinking of, uh, 20 years is, is not very long. You know, they'll easily wait 20 years, 30 years mm -hmm. to take over a country. Um, and it's a lot more efficient and a lot more inexpensive than sending in tanks and bombs. Mm -hmm. Because if you send in tanks and bombs, the next thing you've got to do is rebuild the country. Whereas yes, <clears throat> you take one of your big hospitals and you could just take over it as it is mm -hmm. and then all the hospitals, all the superstructure. So, so are you <clears> saying <throat> that mesh network systems were basically in place prior? Sorry? So mesh network systems, is that sort of what you're describing, taking over a whole area mm -hmm. or a whole oh, vicinity yeah, yeah. at one uh, time? Um, yeah, but that can be done. You don't even have to visit the country. Um, to my knowledge, there are 16 now known transmitters on this planet, whereby if you wanted to take over a country, you can actually send the microwaves up to the ionosphere, up to the ozone layer, uh, which is an electrical conductor, right. reflect it back yeah. down any schoolboy geometry that will cover that. Mm -hmm. um, and you can slowly destroy all of the animals, 
all of the reproduction in the animals, you get rid of all the insects, there is no pollination of plants, and the country goes bankrupt, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and then you move, move in piece by piece, bringing fruit to cure um, any illness, you know, vitamin C deficiency or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and it can be done over 20, 30 years. <clears throat> um, I was having dinner with one of the royal families abroad, and the king was saying to me, uh, he just said, Barry, he says, if we can't stop these people, I will not have a country in 50 years. Mm -hmm. They will have taken over the, the my entire arms, country. Yeah, everything disappeared. Mm -hmm. I, I um, that interview. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and again, I wrote another paper, um, <clears throat> I, knowing you were coming, mm -hmm. um, I thought it, it's quite difficult to describe the brain and all the areas, the main areas of the brain, because you don't target a brain. <clears throat> you target specific areas, specific areas in mm -hmm. the brain. <clears throat> and knowing you were coming, and you're not the only person that has asked me, uh, how do you make a person do this, or how do you make mm -hmm. a person do that? So I actually wrote your paper, especially for you. <sighs> Although, um, before I finished the paper, word had got out that I was writing it. Mm -hmm. um, people from all over the world were saying, can I have the first copy? <clears throat> so copies have gone out mm -hmm. in right. desperation and for lawsuits. Mm -hmm. But um, it was written for you, Alison. Oh, well. um, and you haven't seen it. Appreciate it. You helped us. I didn't yeah. really. I didn't. I don't think I knew that you were doing that. I don't know what to say, Barry. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, I have you. written it for you, and you can take this with you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'll pass it over in a minute. Um, and I've got here that the title is addiction, because yeah. you can addict people. Mm -hmm. Right. Addiction and harm from cell phones, mm -hmm. and. I only started this a month ago because when you said I'm coming and I thought there's something in my mind that would help you uh, and this is for you. I wrote this whole paper for you. Oh. Although you will see it in other countries but when you go there you can say yeah. and I'll write on it dedicated to Alison. Oh. <laughs> um, so I, I, put really in, nice. <laughs> I put in how the brain is changed through what is known as entropy. Right. Yeah. Um, and then I've listed <clears throat> the main areas of the brain mm -hmm. that are being targeted. And in this page here, um, I've named them on this one. This page, I've written down what each particular part of the brain can make you do. In everything from it's violence my to everything from violence to you name it, and, and it can make you do it. So I've listed there where if you change that part of the brain, what it will make you do. Okay, so this is very very interesting. That will interest our lawyer yeah. also a lot. Mm. What I will do. <coughs> it seems to correspond to yeah. actually where the implants are. So oh, this know? is yeah. This is, is why. That, I mean, yeah. That's what I was thinking when I thought. <coughs> Um, yeah. I was wondering something very would have always wondered. Uh, it's probably because it's the same frequencies uh, everywhere that I use. I don't know. <coughs> no. I can get targeted. Uh, uh, no, it's not. No, it's I, not. I can get targeted wherever I go. For example, tonight, you know, we slept uh, you know, not far from here in a, in, a, in a flat that we rented. I was targeted the whole night, uh, radiated the whole night, so I haven't slept. But it is wherever I go. How can I do that? Oh, easy. Hang on. Is it by satellite? I mean, I, that's my guess, but I mean, it, then it seems very It depends far on the, the network satellite. system and how or the, the network system is set up. But I, I get targeted wherever I go, you know? 
Right. Uh. But you have to understand there's towers outside. There's uh, there's different alarm settings. Everywhere you go is a different component. Yes. There's open access points. There's different... Yeah, they're using uh, a light. In my apartment, to, to if I can, they're hacking into a light bulb. You've got that. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amy was talking about that yeah. the other day. Yeah. There's lots of stuff. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but and I must say, I don't know if Barry has special protection in his house, but this is the only place where it's like really dinner uh, dedicated to at others. the moment. <laughs> yeah, your own research paper dedicated <laughs> specifically to you. That's great. Thank you so much. I, 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 I don't know what to yeah. say. I'm quite speechless. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> thank you. That's okay. <laughs> but it tells you there which part of the brain you it's can go for really and what part of the body it will change. Yeah. That's what I do with my thermal imaging. I've been he picking yeah. up heat signatures on the head yeah. and can identify the locations but of so where they're being hit. Yeah, but coming back to this, um, coming back now, what was I going to get some papers? Hang on. This paper is <clears throat> yeah, no, no. really, really interesting. I've got specific papers that. Um, do you want a hand? No, 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 no. I've got specific papers um, where there is a lot of published research that can help you. <clears throat> um, I can obviously help you. And the other man, there's only two of us on, on the planet, I know, that are doing what we do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you heard of Jerry Flynn? You <clears throat> tell me about him. He's a, he's a captain in the intelligence service mm -hmm. um, for Five Eyes. <clears throat> Five Eyes is America, Canada, the UK, Australia, New Zealand. Mm -hmm. We all share the same secrets. Right. <clears throat> but um, like me, when he realised the death toll from this, <clears throat> um, from all of this going on around the world now, is going to be around 2 billion people. Mm -hmm. That's provable. That They're going to kill 2 billion people <clears throat> with this technology. And <clears throat> just as a rough summary, <clears throat> um, 1941, I think I've got it written down here, Am I right? 1949, there we are, um, <clears throat> 1949, mind control was possible, uh, 1950, most of the brain's frequencies were identified and used in mind control. Mm -hmm. In 1956, the pulses that changed the way the brain thought were used. <clears throat> and you can, by pulses, you can change or cause birth defects, organ failure, whole body organism failure. Mm -hmm. So I've got a, a draft on the back of my neck and I'll just shut this door. Um, <clears throat> so you could have a whole body failure. Um, that's it. Um, whole body failure in 1956. <clears throat> Of course, 1962, you had Pandora, mm -hmm. which involved hundreds of thousands of people around the world. <clears throat> Pandora, the Americans checked for all cellular damage, brain function, emotion, moods. It was adopted by the US military by 65. Um, Cancer was proven in 71, and the blood-brain barrier could be breached in 71, which means they had 
access to your brain. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> and nineteen seventy two, you had crowd control by microwaves and annihilating all crowds. Um, <clears throat> I'll run down some, the, 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 the book I recommend you get, <clears throat> I'll just read out a few of these, but it goes back, I said, to 1949, Operation Lydia, uh, that is, was used as a microwave weapon, it was used again, 50-52, cataracts could be brought in the eyes in 52, mm -hmm. Uh, 56, they knew it was all harmful and became the perfect weapon. 62, Pandora. 65, <clears throat> they adopted the thermal level that microwaves could be used with. Um, and in fact, it goes on, I think, the last from the Senate. Yeah, I've got it here. Um, this may surprise you, but in 1990, Operation Sleeping Beauty, uh, Ronald Reagan legalised um, all microwaves and microwave weapons to be used for harm, and that was in the 90s. Mm -hmm. Now we have the latest weapon, which is... Um, what do they call it, the latest weapon, the growler, <laughs> they call it the growler, uh, which can be used from vehicles, drones, any, anything like that. But <clears throat> everything you want in terms of names, dates, places that you can use in court mm -hmm. for evidence, everything you want is in those two books. Okay. Okay. Um, what you need to do is you need to buy those two books. Okay, no problem. Do okay. I get them all, like on the internet? Or do you want to Amazon? write down the... I've got it. Yes, you gave me. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but everything I've read here mm -hmm. uh, is in those two books. That's written down by Jerry Flynn. Okay. Um, and uh, that, that is really all you want. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and you can prove everything from those two books, basically. <clears throat> um, your question was, how do they follow you around? Yeah, wherever I go. And know exactly where you are. Yeah. Uh, and... <clears throat> and <clears throat> well, uh, that's not a lot of difference <clears throat> in me. No, that's yeah. not, You're that's not going to like my answer, but I have to be brutally honest when I answer. Um, is you are causing it to yourself. What do you mean? You are responsible for making yourself an easy target. Um, in what way? You carry a cell phone. Ah, okay. Right, now, right. cell phones, <clears throat> a lot of them, when they are manufactured, <clears throat> some of the chips come from China. Mm -hmm. All of them now, these things, some, right? Some of them are from the United Motorola, mm -hmm. United States, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which are the main two people. Mm -hmm. uh, they work with other nations, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but what we know is in some of these cell phones, <clears throat> the chips can be activated from another country without you even knowing and without the person manufacturing the cell phone doesn't know. Mm -hmm. So you buy a cell phone and the chips, they have um, many thousands of combinations mm -hmm. that, that can go through mm -hmm. in the binary arithmetic, mm -hmm. many thousands. <clears throat> and from another country, all they have to do, because they will know you are where you are, because all they have to do to the chip that they put in, be it China, the um, secret services of the 
Yeah, careful with him, he might fall on the floor. Yeah, I'll just give you a <clears throat> Yeah. Um, whether it be China or somewhere else, mm -hmm. they can ask the chips at any time to switch on, send their signal back, and by carrying your cell phone, even when it's off, mm -hmm. totally off, yeah. that it can be switched on, they have facial recognition so anybody you're talking to the chances are you will have a picture on your cell phone mm -hmm. when you have taken photographs mm -hmm. of pictures they'll have all of those pictures all of the names and the addresses where these people belong where they work they can then go to their houses um, they can ask your cell phone to read a message that is from inside your body from an implant. Mm -hmm. You can send a message to an implant. Mm -hmm. If you go to a hospital to be tested for an implant, mm -hmm. they can say, turn yourself off. And when the people in the x-ray department, they say, well, look, You've got a little dot there, but it mm, could be yeah. calcium oxide, it could be... That's what they usually say, yeah. ...something, yeah. but it's not transmitting, mm -hmm. uh, it's perfectly safe, it's your imagination. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and then when you come away, they can make it I'll come on again. Uh, and they can control virtually around ten and a half thousand different biological functions in your body mm -hmm. and all of your neurological functions um, and and if you put the combination together there are when I was debriefing spies in the Cold War <clears throat> I made a list of I don't know if you've got it. I made a list of, um, I'll give it to you. I think it was 30 or 40 neurological states and physiological states that could be induced from different microwave pulses. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the list today, now, when, when I did the list, it was uh, 30 to 40. Uh, the list today is have I got it on this sheet, it's not on that sheet. Um, yeah, here we are. I've got this for you again. Um, I was, I, I made a list, talk, I spent 11 years talking to spies um, and during the Cold War they could change heartbeat, sleep pattern, paranoia, hallucinations, depression, suicide, anger management, sexual, sexual violence, uh, seizures, epileptics, sensory problems, confusion, mania, hyperactivity, Mm -hmm. That was all possible. Um, Isn't that all part of the sleep deprivation tactic, though? Yeah. Like, for instance, even and, yeah, and, and I've done, I've written the pulse frequency that will cause it. Okay, that's very interesting. Okay, <clears throat> which again you can Could have. We take Sorry, copies of this? You can copy it. Oh, okay. It's photocopy free. Okay. <clears throat> and the other one you you may want. Yeah, I'll go back. Um, Okay, great. <laughs> I wrote a, a paper, Are You Being Targeted? The answer may surprise you. Um, and I've written a biography, really, of targeting satellites, governments. And in it, I've written the three, the pattern numbers. Well, you can just apply for the, the machine that does it, because you've got the pattern number. Um, of the uh, 
voice to skull um, where you can't hear nobody else can hear the voice only you mm -hmm. and it goes into your brain and tells you what to do mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you know how that was developed I do for deaf people well in well, to prevent shoplifting, shop yeah. yeah. But but it originally started for deaf people. <clears throat> so yeah. the deaf, um, you could yeah. send a signal from a little cell phone. Yeah. You could type out a message. It would go yeah, into so their the into their ear, mm -hmm. and it would be transmitted to the brain, and you could physically talk to mm -hmm. them. Yeah, I see. Um, but of course, then it came over for shoplifting, mm -hmm. and now, of course, it's being used by the military. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oops. Oops. <laughs> now, now, question with the voice to skull technology. Um, I've been capturing a lot of information where they're using the scripts behind the transmissions of the um, uh, the electrical grid systems. Yeah. Uh, now, what type of software or equipment can help us identify those scripts in that transmission in order to prove the different types of programs that are being used? You won't. Because I, when I hear them um, on their radio systems, they say, oh, we're naked all the time, we're naked. Yeah. But they're easily identifiable through spectrums. When I'm analyzing the spectrums, I could see their EVMs, like okay. their air vector management yeah. systems, their QAM systems, and identify the drone signatures inside of those spectrums. So if we could visually see them on the spectrums, there's got a way to be able to analyze the scripts and be able to see the scripts. Can you show them any scripts? Well, I know what it is. Um, <clears throat> The chances are they will be, they will have a, a secret yeah. password. Yeah. They'll have a secret password right. in binary that if you downloaded it onto an oscilloscope, you wouldn't be able to identify what the message was. Well... I could identify they sent the messaging oh, yeah, they through sent the an INF. I could yeah. identify it that way, but you're right. I can't decode it no. or decrypt it in order to because it's through a victim's file. Yeah. Only be, way you would be able to decode it is to capture yeah. it in real time, yeah. though, right? Yeah. So um, you're standing in court, and you're saying to the jury that. I'm being told to take all my clothes off in the middle of this store and the judge will say have you deciphered or decrypted the actual message got a printout that says take all your clothes off in the middle of the store mm -hmm. and your answer will be no. no. Well wouldn't that be done through cryptography though? They use the same they use the same codes that they use to protect themselves against every everybody they want to protect themselves against. So the chances of you breaking that code are almost zero. So it is so complicated. Isn't that a form of cryptography though? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, but but they will have Trillions upon trillions of combinations <clears throat> that right. you have got to get okay. through. <clears throat> um, even it's so it would be um, <clears throat> it, it, it it would be of sort of ten to the power twelve or something combinations that, that they could have. <clears throat> Which, there's more atoms in the planet, or not as many atoms in the planet as the number of ways you could, you would have to be able to decipher it. But if you had a chip in your body or something, mm -hmm. that would be programmed to pick this up. Well, that would oh, be right. used to for the tone yeah. generators, right? Yeah. So in the, order for the So the judge would say to you, can you print this down and I can read the words? You say no. 
And then he will say, well, how do you know? Because they could identify the frequency. it's not your brain saying to you, I want to strip off in the middle of the store. Yeah. Uh-uh. You can't prove it isn't. Well, that's not true. <clears throat> with my forensic no, technique, it, yeah, we can't. The, I'm involved in court cases with this. Mm-hmm. And knowing it's happening and knowing you are being targeted is a whole world away from proving it in court. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. A whole right. <clears throat> um, but there's got to be a way. Well, there, there yeah. isn't a way. This is why it is so successful. Yeah, I know, but uh, a lot of the victims that are turning to us have implants. And well, a lot of people have implants they don't even know. They're nanotubes. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I've been capturing. They've been talking about the tubes. Yeah, nanotubes. Tubes, yeah. And, but I couldn't figure out what type of tubes but they, they were. Nanotubes. And uh, okay. we need to figure that concept out in order to correlate yeah. the mm-hmm. information that I'm collecting. Yeah. So when I'm writing these reports, I can make sure that they're accurately done and validate that information. I'm with you. Okay. You can have nanotubes which are carbon, which you know. Right. You can also have them done in a crystal. Various crystals mm-hmm. can form nanotubes. They have, they can make, in this day and age, you can probably make one uh, from uh, substances that are not even known on the periodic table, where you have if you think of MIT, probably the best brainiest university on the planet, <clears throat> if you put a team of PhD students together and say, here's a grant for 12 years, produce something that will hold this amount of electronic or this amount of poison or this amount of substance, <clears throat> and they would do it. They would do it in their 12 years. And you have a substance that isn't even known, that only they know. <clears throat> what about the cloning, though, with the nanotubes? <clears throat> We're short of cloning. I know that they're able to clone um, or mirror, I guess you might say. Um, yeah, there are two types. Are you talking about the nanotube itself, cloning itself? Yes. Those are crystals. Those are the crystals. Crystals, okay, so. crystals clone themselves. That's, that's why crystals grow. Mm-hmm. Um, but oh, you can't... Like this, this self-assembling and ultra Yeah, thing. yeah. The, um, <clears throat> they self-assemble. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't surprise me where you have... Uh, some form of meiosis or mitosis in an artificial virus Uh, as viruses clone themselves. Mm -hmm. In fact, a virus can clone itself into tens of millions of clones Mm -hmm. if you were to feed it one cell with the right substances to get into and clone itself. It's how colds and flu. Uh, yeah. What about the microtubes? <clears throat> well, those are, are slightly bigger nanotubes. Okay. Well, I know there's usually adjustment in size, but hmm. doesn't each one have different capabilities in regard well, to that? Absolutely. That they have. The capability is down to the imagination or the skill of the person building it or making it. And it isn't difficult to say to uh, to say to um, a team of scientists, 
you know, I want you to make something that will do this. The chances are with unlimited funds, unlimited laboratory conditions, you they will be it. able to make it mm. over six years, seven years, ten years. Um, they can already, what's his name? Um, what's his name? Fentor, Fentor, Craig Fentor, something like that. Um, uh, there, there's a there's a man, and he's he can produce life in a test tube, not life as we know it, but he can produce. I think it's Craig Fentor or Craig Fenter. Um, but he can already produce cells or substances that will reproduce themselves. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> so you can reproduce cells um, and you can reproduce them with whatever you want inside them. Mm -hmm. And when you come to... I'm thinking, because you said crystals, right? Um, <coughs> a couple of years ago, because I've got Morgellons, so mm. there were actually visible, visible material, fibers and other things coming out of my skin. So I took that to a university professor, a toxologist, and I said, mm. listen, this comes out of my skin. I would mm. like you to take samples and analyze this and tell me what's the <coughs> composition of this. Yeah. You know? And he came back saying, well, I could not at least that's in the report, totally identify it. So they were faced with something new, if at least what they claimed. But there was some crystalline crystal material in it and uh, that it was also artificial. It was um, something in the po with polymer structures. So, well, I figured that was nanotechnology. You know, but they could not totally identify it. But there was def definitely crystal or crystalline material, something yeah. in with it. So <clears throat> that's what I was thinking when you talked about the nanotubes yeah. and, the, and the crystals. And, <laughs> and yeah. I have the laboratory reports. But the, the number of what you can ask them to do, I mean, they work mathematically, they work on the factorial mathematics. <clears throat> In other words, um, if you had, uh, if they wanted to put something in, you could have one substance, uh, let's say you had 12 substances in, uh, in atomic levels, you could have the damage that could be done by one mm -hmm. mixed with the damage that could be done by two, and then three, so it's one times two, times three, times four, times five, times six. And by the time you get up to 30, uh, which isn't beyond people, um, you could introduce virtually everything to everybody on the planet. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Because the, the multiples, when you get into the trillions and trillions and trillions. <clears throat> so it, it, is, um, it is a phenomenal, weapon. Well, isn't it time now to call actually Paul? This is what well, yeah. so we'll, uh, you know, to call yeah. and that's, uh, that's the lawyer would like to actually talk to you if that's yeah. possible because he's found what he believes is a way. Well, you'll have to use one of your phones. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course yes. we'll yeah. use mine. Yeah. Our lawyer Paul, Paolo is organizing a conference together with Ecotor on the 3rd of December mm. where he wanted Amy to present how she's collecting evidence but he wants to invite other scientists as well to <laughs> Uh, and I know it's a bit short notice, <laughs> but we, uh, it would be great if, if Barry could be there, you know, um, because there will be other scientists as well. There will be also um, a physicist that we know, um, it's a former military. Um, he uh, He's also a psychotronic weapons expert, um, and uh, he will be there, he's called Daniel Lucri. We were hoping to invite you, and uh, Amy will be presenting, but not only Amy. There will be doctors there and other lawyers okay. um, that our lawyers are inviting. Uh, and we will 
do that in preparation of the ho hopeful court case okay. that we're going to organize. Um, so we'll, we'll get Paolo uh, now. This, this is our okay. lawyer uh, to just explain. <coughs> okay. Okay. Oui, bonjour, Paolo. Uh, voilà. On est ici avec Barry Trower. <laughs> Il nous a déjà expliqué vraiment des choses super intéressantes. On a essayé de le motiver peut-être de venir nous rejoindre pour la conférence du 3 décembre. Uh, mais maintenant, je vais, uh, parce que je vais traduire en, en anglais. Uh, donc, uh, voilà. Um, Est-ce que tu auras des, des questions uh, spéciales à lui poser? Uh, um, Precisely. For example, if you have a lesion or a burn mark, uh, do we can we scientifically prove a hundred percent that this is been this burn mark is done by an electromagnetic weapon? For example, is there mean the means with with a hundred percent certainties that? Uh, uh, we, I don't. That's not true. Because I'm identifying the burn marks on the victim's bodies. But can you prove it's from an electromagnetic weapon and not anything else? We could prove that through the central nervous system that it's attacking. Okay. You stopped my interest. I, I, I could I could actually go over that and show you with that, yeah. Uh, okay, well um Amy's saying yes, I'm saying no. <laughs> um, I'd be interested to hear. Uh, il dit que, selon lui, on ne peut pas le prouver avec 100% de certitude, mais Amy dit que oui. <coughs> Donc il dit qu'il serait intéressé à, pour que Amy explique comment elle le prouve avec 100% de certitude. Par contre, je, enfin, il nous a donné toute une liste, tous, toutes les tous les problèmes de santé que ces armes peuvent causer et comment et quelles, quelles armes on utilise pour telle ou telle chose et quelle fréquence. Ça, oui. C'est ça, c'est ça. Parce que, parce que l'idée, c'est pour lui expliquer, c'est que mm -hmm. euh, les personnes victimes, les personnes victimes euh, dont des électromagnétiques euh, qui ont des lésions physiques à cause de ça, oui. ben, il faut pouvoir prouver que ce sont euh, par le biais des ondes. Oui. Et donc, euh, et donc il faudrait idéalement un outil euh, donc Mm -hmm. qui permet de l'établir scientifiquement mm -hmm. et pas de, dans le cadre d'une procédure, procédure judiciaire. Bien sûr, oui. C'est ça l'objectif. Oui. Je pense à un cas où il est allé à la cour et la personne avait un burn mark dans la forme, dans une forme spécifique qui pouvait venir from a from a weapon ah. but but the judge said anything else that shape yeah. could have caused that burn and a burn in the skin or a burn in the flesh is a burn in the skin or a, you, know, you can tell if it's boiling water or fire or a stamp from a yeah. something red hot yeah. but you you can't prove that an electromagnetic wave has burnt you. Uh -huh. uh, okay, he points out, for example, in procedure. Well, you correct me. Où correct y avait, me. Um, no, actually, you can't. Uh, because okay. of the different types of weapon oh, okay. systems, including. Oh, okay. 
Uh, Est-ce que Paul, tu, tu penses que ça serait bien si you were talking about venir, attends, thermal molecular waves et yeah. qui peut apporter right. tout, tout Those son matériel, thermal molecular enfin, waves tout, tout, tout can affect the body in a physical manner. Pour they notre can't notre be picked justice, up through a thermal imaging machine. Uh, Identifying besoin, areas within the body, you're really like, venir, this is really like, uh, this is really like, 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 parce que euh, il explique par exemple qu'ils ont eu un, un cours, enfin euh, un, un dossier en justice où euh, la personne avait ici sur la trempe une une brûlure d'une fo d'une forme vraiment très spécifique hein. et alors euh, eux lui il a pu montrer ben en fait cette brûlure là euh, elle peut venir que de cette arme là ça ça fait exactement ce, ce genre de forme de, de, de brûlure <rire> Et ben, le, juge a, le juge a dit non, mais euh, n'importe quel autre euh, euh, objet blessant pour faire ça. Mais en fait, lui, il n'était pas d'accord parce que cette arme-là fait vraiment exactement cette brûlure-là. Enfin, cette forme. Il faut voir avec lui si il pouvait être présent ou pas. Et si tu me tiens en courant, hein. euh, pour l'instant, je suis averti en fait. Je suis averti. Oui. Euh, mais donc, euh, voilà. Mais donc, euh, euh, voilà, lui, s'il peut être là, okay. et, euh, on tient en oui, on lui perd évidemment c'est frais, quoi, mais je pense qu'il faut qu'on essaie qu'il soit là, quoi. Euh, ah, ça, ça sera le mieux. Um, ok, uh, Paolo would really, really appreciate if, if you could come to Belgium for the conference and you could, you know, talk together about all this. I think uh, it would really be fantastic. What we're saying here, you, you've got thermal imaging there, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. which is infrared, not microwaves. Yeah, that's right, what right. I mean, I mean that's, yeah. Uh, you, you've got You, you've got, and I'm, I'm agreeing with Amy there, mm -hmm. um, and I, I've seen this before. Mm -hmm. You've got thermal imaging, which is infrared, yeah, not microwave. Okay. Now, thermal imaging picking up heat, and you can also transmit heat. Yep. Mm -hmm. But with the reflections of the wounds of when they're being physically hit, yeah. And identifying them as those micro radiation burns, we could prove through the thermal imaging that same spot in that same location of that mark and that heat signature. I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, I'm agreeing. Yeah, I'm agreeing. Uh, I'm agreeing that you, you've got little implants there, or whatever is there, and you've got thermal imaging, imaging around it, mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> so you've got your implant, you've got your thermal imaging, and you can follow the trail of the thermal imaging, and it matches perfectly the weapon. Right. Right. In court, against a barrister, you've got the burn marks around. Now, Your argument is, these implants are there, the burn mark should look like this, and it does look like this, therefore these microorganisms or these pieces of apparatus have caused the burn. Right. Okay? So I agree with that, no problem. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay? But <clears throat> a barrister will come back at you in court and say, yes, something has produced heat. They have produced heat, is what you're saying. They have produced heat. It can be picked up by thermal imaging. And you, you have a picture of around these areas picked up with thermal imaging. This is what you're saying. <clears throat> right. Okay. But I also have the audio evidence to prove okay. the radio communications to prove the attacks of the location where yep. they hit. And you approve the attack. Okay. But, uh, and, and I'm going into the atomic physics here, but can you, if you put that before a jury and said, this is causing this, here is the sound, make up your mind's jury. Okay. The jury will probably say, yes, uh, in the balance of probability, this caused this, and we will agree with Amy. Mm -hmm. But if you're saying to me, does the skin burn differently 
than if you put a hot iron on or you've got nails in in your bones holding them together you've got AO plating to strengthen bones or something and they have warmed up and are causing burning it's still the process of burning is a it's the, the the process of burning also has to deal with the sensories of the nerves. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Because each, each nerve and each component, and depending <clears throat> on where the weapon system hits, yeah. gives a different sensation. Whether it is a tingling effect, where it, whether it is a burning effect, whether it is a zapping, or <clears throat> though an, an electrical sensation. I agree with you. I agree with you, but where I'm coming from, and. I, I, I'm, I'm being the barrister mm -hmm. opposing you in court, and you've got to defeat me. Now, the way that I could prove it <clears throat> simultaneously is by an ECOG, a medical test, where it identifies the nerves that are being affected within the person's body. Identifying the nerves and identifying the physical wound locations on the body can verify the information. Yeah, and, and that's fine. But my argument would be when the skin or the cells start to burn at 0 0.6 degrees, the heat shock proteins take over the cell and the cell then collapses at an orderly, an orderly process of apoptosis where the cell Will, do, will defend itself and then will kill itself. Now, you're you're saying to me, and and I, I'm I'm happy I believe it. If you're saying to me, will the heat shock proteins react differently to one type of burn or another type of burn, like sunbathing, or you put a red hot poker on you, or you burn your finger under a tap? Um, if you're saying to me, you've got a burn, I can identify you've been sunbathing, I can identify you put your hand under a hot tap, I can identify there's a nail holding a plating in your leg, because the burns will be different from those than it will from another source of infrared. And that where, that's where the measurement's coming out yeah, into okay. play. Okay. Like yep. measuring from one point to another yeah. point yep. of the wounds. Yep. Um, and you can, you can like experiment and cause it. Right. If it's right. a freckle, yep. right, they're not going to be a specific, a specific measurement apart. They're going to be mm -hmm. in a blotch or okay. a, as more as a patch, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Kind of like a mosquito bite is random and yep. bites are random, yep. right? They're not going to be one inch apart, an inch and a half apart, two no. inches apart, all going down the central nervous okay. system. But I can agree, I can agree with everything okay. you said. But where I'm where I'm stuck, I wouldn't like the whole of my case to rest on you can identify one burn from another. But it no, but it's just it's one component. Yes, if it's one right. component. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, exactly. one component. <laughs> if it's yeah. one component. But the case is not but, it's solely on no, this. But you, you will need... Um, I, I, can, I can see where you are and I can follow your argument and I can say, yes, I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem at all. We have yeah. the frequencies... Yeah. to identify the wounds yeah. along with the weapon system names and the frequencies of the body that could be identified along with the neurological links. I don't have a problem with that. that. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. I wouldn't rely just on this. No, no, and not you could be right. That. But in court, as a scientist in court, I would want... The 40 cases documented saying this has caused this. Right. We have 40 mm -hmm. cases. Yeah. Um, if you could do that, and I've never read a paper, 
I didn't, until I'd read something. Would you like a copy? When you when you do, have you written the paper? I I've written uh, multiple reports individually for the victims. Yes. Yeah. Um, what? Yeah, but you need to write a paper. You need to write a paper. Uh, proving that A caused B and specifying all of the 40. You might get away with 40. Mm -hmm. um, How many is a, like, a proper amount? Like 100? A, oh no, a proper amount is a blind test of several thousand. Oh. Okay. I don't have that. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. Um, I'm on my way. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. saying you. I'm saying you. Trying got, to at least. I'm saying you've got yeah. a good one, and you you could win with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. But my scientist brain mm. says, okay. Now, uh, if you had a blind test, you would. <clears throat> See, for an experiment, and I'm not being difficult with you, I don't want you to be in the dock. Yeah, yeah I understand. You just want to play the, devil's advocate. I don't basically. want you to be in the dock <laughs> right. and have somebody, when you're right, but because you're right doesn't mean you're going to win. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, I, I can follow it and I can say, yes, I, I can believe that. I don't disbelieve anything you've done. But... An experiment, for this to be believed in court, it has to be scientifically reproducible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It has right. to be reproducible. And you have got to get <clears throat> um, an independent scientist right. mm -hmm. in an independent lab. <clears throat> you give him your method of experiment and then he will carry out the experiment, or she will carry out the experiment. If theirs agrees with your, yours, you've won. Mm -hmm. Same. You've won. Right, okay? right. But, uh, and I'm, I'm not being difficult here, but... And that's what we're trying to do yeah, with the lawsuit exactly. on yeah. the third. Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. I'm not being difficult, yeah, but... to have some kind of peer review. But, or, um, <laughs> you, what's the idea? <clears throat> you set out the experiment, you get somebody who is totally ambivalent or, or everything that's going on, uh, a private laboratory, and you say, I want you to do this experiment. Here are the, you, the, you have the chips, you have the heat, you have the wave frequencies, you have everything. I want 40 experiments carried out on different tissues and nerve fibers, whatever it is you want. They will do it, and they will then send you their professional results. Mm -hmm. If they match yours, mm -hmm. I will say, yes, Amy, you are absolutely correct. Well done. Um, you have proved it to me. Fine, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, um, but that is what is required in court. Because mm -hmm. I'm not talking about you, but there are in the tobacco industry and in the like the smoking industry and the lead paint industry, the radiation industry, um, they have all shown to have defrauded their experiments. Right. It, it does go on. Um, experiments are defrauded and they will have all their professors appear in court and say, you know, this is our experiment, and no, it, it, it's rubbish, it doesn't work. Um, but you've got to get an independent lab, and if someone else was doing that, they could be that you are manipulating your, and I'm not saying you, it is done, drug companies have done it many times and been picked up for it. Right. They manipulate results, mm -hmm. and they have statisticians come in and lay statistics yeah. down. Because every victim's wounds are a little bit different, which yeah, varies in the information and the reports and my findings. But there are common factors mm. um, from the victims that I've noticed, like within yeah. the brainstem, mm -hmm. 
within the two points within the wrist I and agree. that's for motor function and flexibility another is part of the central points in the yep. toes along mm -hmm. with the sur um the sural and the sciatic nerve yeah. um through the heel and the feet to get your toes to twitch and yeah. force movement mm -hmm. manipulation through the body i can agree with all that yeah and in fact what i would go one stage further um I would get them, because they will have one, to uh, look at it, look at the burn under an electron microscope. An mm -hmm. electron microscope. That, okay. An electron microscope. Um, that takes you down to the very atom, and you may be able to show that the electrons are going to different thermal layers mm -hmm. as opposed to different burns you now may, you may get to show that quick question in in regards to the manipulation of the body like for instance with allison's report i find a lot of acrylic and amino acids that are yeah. being manipulated yeah. Yeah. and i noticed on your piece of paper that the central location of the brain the neurological response that amino acids could be manipulated from can, that can standpoint I just, can i just add to that Sorry. can we this is important. My amino acids toxicology test is quite shocking and severely depleted at the moment. So, with the amino acids, okay, we got the medical test to prove that her has been depleted. We have the audio evidence of it, and I didn't do the thermals yet, but yeah. uh, that correlation. Oh, crap, I forgot my question. <laughs> Is there a way? It'll come back to you. <laughs> Is there a way? I mean, a, with the electron microscope, yep. that yep. we would be able to prove it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And I've got it here for you. I was going to give you this as well. Okay. 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 Thank you. That's all right. Oh. I've got it here. We're <laughs> And I'm not being difficult, but I'm being a scientist. No, yeah, and you're right. right. We have to. Um, if you get an independent person mm -hmm. to verify the wavelengths and everything, and they carry out, and theirs are identical to yours, <clears throat> you write the paper, mm -hmm. and when I read the paper, I will say, yes, Amy is right. Mm -hmm. Different burns can cause different symptoms mm -hmm. signs and symptoms mm -hmm. would that still be able to prove like through the dopamines and the endorphins along with yep. yeah electron microscope well yeah okay because perfect. yeah perfect now what i've got here is um mechanisms um okay right under mechanisms i'll just put a little asterisk there are We're on the same wavelength, you and I, Amy. <laughs> That's why we're here. We were hoping that your wavelengths would... There are, hang on. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... There should be 13. Hang on. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not all down here. And then about eight... Um, Right, I've actually got more than more than that. <clears throat> <So anyway. clears throat> right, we've got mechanisms. Right, so uh, cryptochrome, demyelination, HP energy, Russian virus, yeah, loss, species energy. So there, we've got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And diagnosis of it here. You've got right. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight ways of diagnosis. What did I say first? Eight to sixteen then. Okay. One, two, three, four, 
four, six, seven, eight. Yeah. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, sixteen. Sixteen tests you can do. Okay, perfect. Of asterisks, mechanisms, and things there. Sixteen. Thank you, Barry. But you appreciate where I'm coming from, Amy. Until I read the paper, I can't say you're right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Until I mean, I, I know that I'm low right. on the people testing, you know, even before I started my forensic processing and yeah. going to school mm. for digital forensics and things yeah. like that. Um, I tested it out on 200 but, people. But the thing to do is, is um, what, there are 16 different tests there. They can all be found chemically with a spectrometer or uh, your electron microscope. Um, <clears throat> there are 16 different ways, uh, different things that can be tested. Yeah, I know the electro... <clears throat> yeah, but there are 16 there. And when I read the paper, you don't need all 16, when I read the paper, um, the first thing I will do is say, yeah, Amy is absolutely right. But I can't say yes until I've read the paper. Mm -hmm. Or you'll all go to court and say, this scientist says yes. And then they say, no, it's not been proven. And then I owe you lots of money. Yeah, At least I'm on the right path. Yeah. You're, you're right. You're absolutely right. You're on the exactly right path. What you need to do is you have to patent your idea. I've already patented it. She has already done that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Our lawyer asked her too. Um, right. Patent your idea. That's really good. Now, there are 16 things there you can test um, from spectroscopes. Spectroscopes, electron microscopes, all sorts of things where you can identify one type of bone from another. And if you do that, you write your research paper. You, you write your research paper, um, and then this is the scary bit. You write your research paper, you send it to two or three scientists. Um, they will read it and they will peer review it and then if they say no problem here Amy then donk you can publish it and once you've published it or had it peer reviewed not even published once you've had it peer reviewed then every science every scientist can say yes there are different types of burns for different implants in the body all right. okay. You're on the right track, okay. absolutely on the right track. <laughs> okay. But um, you, you've you've got to have, it's got to be bomb proof in court. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. right, I and that's what we're bomb. trying to yeah. do. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and until that, when anyone asks me, I will say no, mm -hmm. I haven't read it. That's why I asked about the yeah. phaser waves and the mechanical waves yeah. and the water waves, okay. because using the transmission with the phaser waves, mm -hmm. uh, they stimulate an electromagnetic response to the water waves, which can oscillate, right? Your, uh, you know, they vibrate, force was, of vibration yeah. moving back and forth. That was only proven, what you've just said now, was only proven um, within the last year by Dennis Henshaw, Bristol University. And I'll tell you where it's on my... No hiding place paper. Okay. The yeah. proof is on page one where the water molecules, um, he, he went a little bit ahead of you, Professor Dennis Henshaw, Bristol University, page one. He's actually written down the process that says you're right. Okay, uh, so I'm on the right path. He's, he's written See, down the process that says you're right um, because the he has proven that the energy is accumulative. Now, the, the people you're arguing against, they have said, when the photons come in, and everything travels by photons, when the photons come in in the wave, 
there isn't enough energy in the photon to cause this damage in a cell. But with like a neural oscillation mm -hmm. or a fast vibration, right? Yeah. The that's where the mechanical waves yeah, come no. into play because they right. store energy. Yeah, no, you're right. But you're going into the ionizing and non-ionizing waves. Now, non-ionizing spectrum, you've got radio waves, um, long wave, all different types of radio waves. The beginning of uh, ordinary light they are non-ionizing. In other words, the argument was that each photon coming in, and they travel as individual photons, even though they travel in waves. Right. Okay. They, 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 they are individual photons, uh, but they follow a waveform. But it doesn't... The f okay. Right. I, but I'll, I'll come on with this. You've got the wave the wave um, <coughs> photon duality here. They travel in waves, but act as particles. <coughs> now, <coughs> each photon, <coughs> and the argument has always been that microwaves and all the other radio waves, each photon does not have the enough energy, the quantum energy, to cause this amount of damage when it strikes an atom to move the electron to produce a wave like x-ray or gamma rays. What about cold fusion? <clears throat> well hang on, yeah I'm coming to that. Um, it, it doesn't have it. No. <clears throat> and Dennis Henshaw, and it's on page one of that, yeah. <clears throat> and our argument right up until this year has been, and I wrote a mathematical paper on it, um, proving it. Uh, my argument has been there is an accumulative effect because there are so many photons so quick that they would act as as an accumulation not one photon <clears throat> but it could never be proved and it's only been proven this year and on page one of my No Hiding Place paper mm -hmm. Dennis Henshaw has shown that there is an accumulative effect. What's his name again? I've Dennis? I've got the paper. <clears throat> You've got the paper yeah. and the explanation. He has shown... This is the public inquiry. The <clears throat> Dennis Henshaw... It's before, it's really good. Yeah, it's, it's the one you've submitted to yeah, the inquiry. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Now, <laughs> Dennis Henshaw... It's the one I prefer. <clears throat> ...has proven that the waves are accumulative. It's on page one. <clears throat> and here <clears throat> he said, and this, this is you, that he's just proven what you're wanting me to say. <clears throat> the idea that cell phone radio waves do not have the quantum energy to damage DNA and therefore cannot cause ill health or burning is a fallacy. It is flawed at a number of levels from the very physics upon which it is supposedly based, the chem to chemistry and biology. Most of all, the idea is not borne out that tens of thousands of peer-reviewed studies reporting the biological effects from exposure to electric, magnetic and electromagnetic fields and electromagnetic radiation including those associated with radio waves um, by use by cell phones. So what he's proven there is that the accumulative effect um, will have, will produce what you have just said. So you are right and it's only been proven. I mean you are thinking ahead of the rest of the world. Um, you know, you, you've obviously got a brilliant, brilliant brain there. Um, in terms of, Nobody in, does in terms of, <laughs> in terms of quantum physics, uh, and if you want, 
I can give you the mathematics to prove it. Yeah, that would be great. I wrote a paper on it. Yeah. Um, that would help me out, at least on a scientific level, be able to correlate all the information yeah. that I'm trying to collect. Um, I, I, wrote a paper, slides, you know? I wrote a paper for 16 university mathematicians. I studied higher maths at university. Um, and I wrote a paper believing that, but mathematics doesn't prove that. Mm -hmm. um, and what you've been telling me, everything, he's just proved it. And my mathematics has now been vilified, verified. Mm -hmm. okay? okay? So you now have the mathematics and him proving that what you have said is correct. So you've got my brain and his brain agreeing with your brain. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but until you've had someone else independently do it and and put the two together where you where they identify it, every scientist will say it is not proven. Which is my answer. Right. I can't right stand up I can't stand up in court and say you're right. I know you're right. Because he's right, and I know I'm right. <laughs> right. I don't know I'm right. This is theoretical. But, right. but, but in court, I would have to say it is not proven. Therefore, it is not right. I understand. Yeah. Right. But, and this is this is where they are going to get you. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I'll give you the mathematics, mm -hmm. um, and you can quote my mathematics. You've already submitted the paper. If you can get another independent laboratory okay. to do these experiments, compare it to yours, you've won, mm -hmm. you write a research paper and have it patented, write a research paper and send it to uh, a magazine and have it published. And then every scientist in the world will then say, when they stand up, including me, and say, yes, this produced possible. by Amy, mm -hmm. here's the paper, been published. Mm -hmm. um, this is partly what Paolo's wanting to try absolutely. to do. Yeah. <clears throat> can I take pictures? You can keep it. Oh, okay, thank you. Yes, Do you want me to dedicate it to you? <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I have your signature on it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It, you know? <laughs> There's four pages, right? It's four pages, okay? You're, you're absolutely magnificent. Yeah. So, yeah. I'll write it to you, Amy. A M Y, Amy? Yes, or sir. I -E. No, uh, A M Y. A M Y. Okay. Dedicated. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Dedicated to Amy. Wishing you well. Sign it. My hand's a bit shaky, but then again, I'm oh. 78 now. Oh. Sorry. Do you want me to put a kiss? <laughs> yeah. Can I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Uh. Dedicated to Amy. Let's see. Now, Amy, and I'll put a kiss there. Oh, thank you. Right. I'm going to love this. Yeah. <clears throat> Alison will be upset now because she didn't get one. <laughs> <laughs> she got to our dedicated copy. No? <laughs> but that's the mathematics of truth. What you've been telling me um, is that's the mathematics that proves it. Oh, perfect. Thank you. It's four pages. I've got to square up on my mathematics. Yeah. <laughs> got to go into the atomic structure there and everything. Well, you know, this is independent laboratory, what you're talking about. Yeah, that, that you, you need to get... That we do have a <clears throat> chance to prove this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but until you actually have, have it independently tested mm -hmm. um, and verified, the answer will always be no. And when you ask me the question, whoever it was asked me the question, 
and I thought... It was the lawyer, I think, who asked the question. Yeah, the lawyer. <laughs> well, you've asked me the question. Yeah, the lawyer asked mm. me the question. Um, and I, I mean... Right now you'd have to... I so keep. this has to deal more with the potassium, the iron, and the chloride? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> sodium, uh, sodium, yeah, that, that this goes with all those. Which is why a lot of people, when they eat bananas, they get heartburn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Why yeah. are you saying sorry? What, what, what did I get? Yeah, you, you can upset your, your calcium, fluorine, no, calcium, um, sodium, all of those, yeah. But, um, yeah, when when you when when the the, the lawyer asked that, yeah. I keep always here the last two thousand papers I've read. I have two thousand papers, uh, and as they come in, I, then I throw the bottom ones away. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, until I read the paper that says yes, mm -hmm. you're right. Mm -hmm. Then every, everyone no. in the world will say no. Mm -hmm. Right, right. <clears throat> yeah, I understand that. If you want to go into the maths there, Amy, um, an easy way to go into it is learn N E R N uh, Nernst. Nernst. How do you spell Nernst? N E R Nernst. It's not an English name. Nernst. N E R Nernst? N E N N E R Nernst. I can't spell it now. N U N S T? Something like that. Any A-level biologist will, will tell you, learns how to spell it. Um, it's. I think I've come <laughs> up with it. I think I've come <laughs> across <laughs> that <laughs> terminology. <laughs> um, yeah. Any A-level biologist will tell you. Um, and it's. Um, he lays out the mathematics of that going through the experimental stage. Okay. What about the zeta waves? Those are in the brain. Oh, oh yeah, I haven't got those. I've just got the first four. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, there, there are more than that. Um, but uh, I, I only wanted the main ones, just as an example, really. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Yeah. But in my brain paper there, the one you've got, I've laid out what they all do anyway. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Your next step now, as I say, you find a nice friendly chemist, <clears throat> biologist, um, friendly chemist, biologist, lay out, like, like when you're at school, mm -hmm. you know, doing an experiment, you lay out how to do it and, mm -hmm. and then result, conclusion, um, <clears throat> just carry on with that. Mm -hmm. um, and then if they get the same results you get, um, you've won. But it, it's quite an anxious time. Yeah. <clears throat> and, then, <clears throat> <excuse me. clears throat> and then you've got to send your paper off for peer review mm -hmm. um, to a professor somewhere to peer review it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That is <clears throat> primarily what this mm. thing on the third is to do with yeah. peer review. And, and that can take some time, peer reviewing, um, and it's incredibly a nervous time. It is a nervous time. And that, but then, you know, they might come back and say, you need to change this and this, uh, you know, well, I know I'm not going to be 100% accurate, you know, because yeah. the one, yeah. I'm only dealing with the basic equipment that I could afford, yeah. you know, and like, uh, like the one that the electron microscope, that could probably cost uh, fifteen to $2,000. Yeah, but what, what are you doing? I mean, you, it's like hiring a JCB, you know, one of these big road diggers. <laughs> you don't hire, you, you don't buy a JCB, you hire the driver mm -hmm. and the machine right. for an hour. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> you can hire a spectroscope, uh, atomic spectroscope, or you can hire the lady and the machine for an hour in a laboratory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and if you're if you're good um, and you've got friends at university, mm -hmm. uh, a 
fourth year students, third or fourth year student, will do it for you for a quarter of the cost. Okay. But it, since they're a student and they're not really a grad, no, would they be considered... Provided the, the provided, professor, uh, provided the professor yeah, yeah. agreed with their result. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They do the math, so write it up, they show the professor, mm -hmm. and he says, yep, no, this is That's okay. Mm -hmm. The professor signs it off. But you're only paying, you're paying students' fees, not mm -hmm. professors' fees. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. okay. I didn't get that done. <laughs> um, I've done his research because I know, like, I needed it patented. I know yeah. that I needed to take certain steps in order to validate my yeah. work mm -hmm. um, and to get it approved within mm -hmm. the court system. So I made sure to do all that proper research. Right? But what was you asking me about the different waves? I was asking about the mechanical waves and the water waves <clears> and the transference <throat> from the energy systems to the point thresholds on the body, if that makes sense, or how the mechanical waves can be transferred through the water waves. Because the mechanical waves store the energy, right? So if they do like a neural oscillation or a cold fusion tactic where they're vibrating the electrons as a fast amount of rate, it produces that energy. And then the mechanical wave produces that energy and it could shoot it through the water waves, which our bodies are made out of 60 to 70% water. So how can they... It, I know it would go through a path. It has to be sent through a path, right? Through the neurological or the central nervous system. But can that in itself produce enough energy to cause attacks, like the sensations of, of the nerves, like the tingling <laughs> sensations, yeah. the electrical? Yeah. Um... I guess I'm trying to figure out the conversion from the mechanical but wave you're, you're, through I'm, I'm, the water <clears throat> waves in the body. If that... Well, you're talking about a longitudinal wave or a transverse wave, and I'm trying to work out which one you mean. Um, <clears throat> well, that has to do with sound <clears throat> waves. With the, so well, sound waves... Wave, yeah, go on. Right. Sound waves and mechanical waves are similar with the transverse yeah. and the longitude, the but the mechanical wave waves uses waves. water waves. And since the mechanical <clears throat> waves work with x-rays, microwaves, um, infrared, infrared, sonic, ultrasonic, yeah. um, <clears throat> weapon systems, that is a key component of how they're producing these effects inside our body. What I'm trying to figure out is the use of the water wave in the mechanical wave, in the sound wave, because both sound waves and mechanical waves use transverse and longitudinal, right? Yeah, you're right, yeah. Where the mechanical wave <gasps> is an additional with the water wave. So one can be converted via frequency <clears throat> to the other, but using the water wave would be a separate component throughout the body. And I'm trying to figure out mm -hmm. how that component is well, separately through the body. A mechanical wave is a longitudinal wave. In other words, if you have a big long spring, I don't know if you did this at school, what are those slinkies they're called, aren't they? Right, right. <laughs> um, if you move one, then the energy goes right the way along yeah. and pushes the other end. Right. Okay. <clears throat> That's a mechanical wave. The transverse wave it's going up is and down. electromagnetic. Right. <clears throat> okay. Um, now, the transverse wave, um, if you, I'm trying to easy way to describe this, if you get a glass of water, and you put it on top of your radio, <clears throat> and then you, you turn the music up loud, the water will vibrate. Okay. Because the sound is going into the water, 
and it's producing waves. I don't know what type of wave it will produce in water, but the energy is being transferred atom to atom to atom to atom. Right. The energy okay. is trying, and the more dense the substance, the faster the wave travels. It's why sound travels faster underwater than it does in air. So because it has to go from atom to atom. And if you... It's the old trick of um, <clears throat> people that worked on the railways. They would put their ear onto the track and they could hear the train <clears throat> 100 miles away. Mm -hmm. Because the closer the atomic structure, the faster the energy travels through. Mm -hmm. Until you get a total vacuum, and now you've got problems. Um, that's why you can't hear sound in space. Mm -hmm. There's nothing there for it to use. There, there is no, yeah. there is no mm -hmm. mechanical... But you could capture <coughs> frequencies in space. Oh, there, there, there is no such thing as empty space. Right. There, there are there are waves in space we haven't even thought of yet. Um, so yes, you're you're right again. Um, <coughs> the mechanical wave will send energy into the water. <coughs> the water will pick up the mechanical wave. The water will vibrate. Mm -hmm. It has to, and you have vibrating water along with anything the water is enclosed in and uh, the energy will disperse through the water without a shadow of a doubt mm -hmm. because water <clears throat> if you put pressure in water um, all of the water takes the pressure you can't have a differential in pressure in water so <clears throat> the water will absorb the energy and then the energy will be transferred into whatever is around or whatever it's, it's going to go into <clears throat> it's um kirchhoff's principle k-i-r-c-h-h-o-f-f -F, kirchhoff um he has said that when energy goes into anything then it, the, whatever it is will vibrate and pass on that particular amount of energy and another one that proved this was Lamar L-E-M-A-R or L-A-M-E-R um, it's Lamar he proved as well that water will transfer energy uh, frequency to frequency so whatever you're putting into the water will also leave the water and carry on mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you're right in so far as if you vibrate water in the body the vibrations will leave as a form of energy into the surrounding tissues mm -hmm. amy is this to do with the um sweat glands and the cold fusion <clears throat> or meaning or is this something well, else is this something else <sighs> This has to well, okay. With the sweet clan, the sweat glands, I've noticed that they've been able to alter a person's temperature. When they mess up a neurological connection, usually by via double link by accident, right? One person grabs onto another person's link and it messes it up, and it can screw uh, screw the aim up, right? Yeah. So it's not connected wrong. It can cause the body temperature to heat Absolutely, and yeah. and overheat but somehow they were cooling the body down by a ventilation process which i believe is through the sweat glands causing a person to sweat causes a person to release <laughs> that energy that is being built up until they could disconnect the double link or the cross connection and separate them. Yeah, um, it, it works out when people use anything with 5G, that's, that's what you get. Um, the 5G wave, and in my paper, this No Hiding Place, I've given the wavelengths of all of the microwaves, including 5G. <clears throat> and 
I've used children here, but <clears throat> you'll probably know this, but the 5G wave, one of them, is the same length as the sweat gland in the skin. Okay. Now, <clears throat> when you have, when you have something in your body that is the same size as the wave or a mathematical multiple of the wave. So, for instance, the sweat gland is the same size as 5G. So when 5G hits the sweat gland, the sweat gland becomes, because it's wet, the sweat gland becomes an aerial. It's how aerials work. Right. An aerial is a conductor. When the wave is a perfect mathematical multiple of the size of whatever it hits, if whatever it hits is a quarter, an eighth, a sixteenth, or times one, or times two, or times three of the size, that, if it is a conductor or is wet, will act as an aerial. So, so are, are you saying then <clears throat> when I hear them talking about the aerial units or aerial, it could also be talking about the temperature of the body? You are. Because what will happen, what happens with 5G is it causes the sweat glands to produce sweat when the body doesn't need to produce it. And when you produce a fluid on your skin, which is meant to cool the body down, it cools the body down because the wind takes the sweat away. And when it takes the sweat away, it takes the heat away and the fluid. So you're actually causing the body to dehydrate and get cold. That's why everybody has low salt, low sugar, mm. and is dehydrated <coughs> out of all the victims. Yeah. It's, uh, the thing to remember with this, and again, it's in my paper there. Um, I've just done it for the pregnant woman. Um, if, if you go into paper and everything else, I mean, the paper would be the size of a phone book. Um, <clears throat> I did it yeah, mine's 60 for pages so far. the 39 weeks of pregnancy. And I've said, when the baby is this size, then this G, 1G, 2G, 3G is this size, and it will cause that organ to, uh, to act as an aerial, and you are now electrocuting that organ. Okay. And one of the frightening things that I discovered that hasn't been discovered yet it's in my paper, <clears throat> is if you are pregnant, but don't know you're pregnant, we'll say up to the first four or five weeks, if, you, if you're pregnant and you don't know you're pregnant and you're not taking any precautions, which is what I wrote about there, um, on the 15th day of pregnancy, there's no way you would know you're pregnant in 15 days. Um, on the 15th day of pregnancy, and you're using 5G, 5G is the same size as the zygotes or the baby. Mm -hmm. 5G is the same size. And it is then possible to cause cancer by what is known as epigenetics where you can change what the gene does without changing the gene structure. So if I had epigenetics in this room, epigenetics would change your behavior without changing you. So you can hide, they can hide it sort yeah. of thing. Yes. Um, so, so epigenetics, as it just so happens, yes, on, the, on the 15th day of pregnancy, with the genetics, what it is doing, it is balancing the cellular structures and telling them where to go. And if a cell makes a mistake, then you get cancer. Mm -hmm. And it is possible on your 15th day of pregnancy to mm -hmm. give your baby cancer before it's even made. 
show that your baby is born with cancer mm -hmm. before on from the 15th day that is provable and the other thing <laughs> that people don't know about um, and you're welcome to go into this uh, it's in one it's in my first paper uh, which is um, I wrote a paper called uh, white Wi-Fi a thalidomide in the making um, I wrote it for a 12 year old girl um, and what I proved there was that and with this and 5g if you damage the mitochondrial DNA in the baby and the baby is a girl the mitochondrial DNA in the female line is, damaged, is irreparable so let's say your baby is growing in you and 5G or 4G or 3G damages the mitochondrial DNA in a particular organ mm -hmm. and causes cystic fibrosis, Down <coughs> syndrome, um, any of the genetic... That's why they attack fetuses. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so if it causes any of those, when you, when you have a baby, the mitochondrial DNA is passed from mother to child to child to child to daughter to daughter until that line stops. Then it's her ex and her ex and her yeah, ex. And yeah, her ex. it goes on. So if you are pregnant and you cause mitochondrial DNA in your baby, then every, every female in that line will pass it on. Will pass it on. Um, cystic fibrosis, Down syndrome, whatever. What, what is that called? What is that terminology called? Or Epigenetics. Epi Epigenetics. Epi Epi yeah. Epi Epigenetics. Because <laughs> when uh, I... You change, the, you change what the gene does without changing the structure of the gene. Um, what I, 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 when I explain this at lectures, I say it's like if you've got a, a class at school and they're all well behaved um, and then you get a really naughty child comes in, the naughty child can get everybody else into trouble but walks out untroubled itself mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and we've all seen those, uh, that, that sort of epigenetic without changing the gene, mm -hmm. so you change it. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, it's very frightening, mm -hmm. and what I say, uh, and you can you can run with this, Amy. Um, the mathematics with this, um, it is published. It is published by the World Health Organization, and it is in my. Um, Wi-Fi, a thalidomide in the making paper. Uh, do you have that one? I've got it, yeah. Yeah, it's in there. And what has been proven in there, but has been kept top secret, is that um, only one in eight children eventually, uh, one in eight, will be born healthy. After three generations... That's where we're at. Yeah. yeah. What it actually says is, um, what, what is proven is that around this, it's 47.7% of births um, will be genetically damaged somehow. Now, let's say half for simplicity in mathematics. So you have a population in Belgium. Take the Belgian population, a half of exposed women are going to have genetically disabled children in one generation. That will be 20 years. 20 years mm -hmm. is a generation. Now, 
you've now got surviving 50% of the women with, with good ovaries. Mm -hmm. 20 years later, but that's the attack on you've the got half of those, systems, right? Half, half of those, which is 25%. So you go from a half of your population in, in Belgium to the first lot of births, then it is a quarter of the births, then an eighth of the births, and you've only gone three generations, 60 years. And the, the science is predicted that in 60 years, only one in eight of your children are going to be born healthy, one in eight. And there is no way you can run your country with one in eight being yeah, health, healthy. The only way you will survive, <clears throat> because a lot of the ones not born will be miscarried um, or stillborn. Mm -hmm. um, in 60 years, if nothing is done, and I say this at conferences, all of my conferences, only we one in eight, <clears throat> only one in eight, <laughs> and this is the World Health Organization saying this, their own scientists, not me, only one in eight uh, will be born healthy. Mm -hmm. Then the only way you will run your country is to do what we had to do at the end of the war when we had so many people killed. The mothers were told to have babies because we needed to build up the population mm -hmm. because we needed babies. And all of the priorities, and I was born at the end of the war, and all of the milk and the food went to the children, not the mothers, not the workers. It came to us in school. <clears throat> and during the school holidays, you had to go into school every day in the school holidays, even, Drink your milk. even Christmas Day, to have milk and to have malt and anything else they could give you to eat. And every day you were registered, you went in. To, they, there's children had to be born healthy. Mm -hmm. And another thing they did is they sent you to a dentist and they pulled out most of your teeth, drilled out most of your teeth because there were, there was no toothpaste, no toothbrushes. There was no way you could clean your teeth. So you all went to the dentist where you were gassed. They drilled all of your teeth and put in fillings so you couldn't get toothache. Because if you got wow, toothache, there was nothing to do. Yeah. See, and you could yeah. die from toothache. And we had yeah. sort of polio, um, all the other childhood diseases that were still going round. Um, uh, you know, so all of the help went to the children. But the only way we could run our country was to get hundreds and thousands of people in mm -hmm. from all of the other countries to run the factories, run the health service, drive the buses, pay the taxes. And you're going to be in that position. Any country is going to be in that position. But it's, it's documented that only one in eight in 60 years time is going to be alive. And that's, that's published by the World Health Organization. Well, this is clearly a genocide. Yes, it is genocide. It's, it's and um, a, a, a professor, Professor um, uh, Dominic Bo Bohim, Dominic Bopom. Yeah, Bo Bopom. <laughs> yeah, um, Bopom. 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 Um, no, it's not Do Dominic. Dominic Bopom. Um, Something like. Yeah, Bear Pond. I think Dominic Bear Pond. Bear Pond. And he's, he's in France. He's deceased now. I think he's he's dead now. No, he's not. No, no. Uh, no. Well, um, well, that was the wrong information. I think. Yeah, but he <laughs> is. He's just started up a a, a group of scientists um, to take the industry to the world court. I know that because I've supplied them all with our documents, mm -hmm. Cold War documents. Yeah, Dominique Belpon. Belpon, yeah, in Paris, right? Yeah, yeah. Dominique Belpon. Yeah, I wanted to reach out to him, but then I was told he had he was deceased. But, but he's taking people to the World Court. 
the scientists to the World Cup okay, well, to stop this. To but th yeah. the thing is, the good news is um, not every country is doing this. The bad news is, and I've said this in lectures, the countries not doing this are the Soviet Union, mm. China, North Korea, mm. Indonesia, all of the countries Third that world. do not like Europe mm -hmm. and the West. They are building their populations up. In China, and it's in my paper, if you have had intercourse as a lady and you have to prove to the police that you have not had it or when you did, that they will stop you in the street and say, when did you last have intercourse? If it was within 15 days and you're not wearing you have this protection a, lead, yeah. a lead apron, you will go to jail. Yeah. yeah. I, I read that in your yeah. paper. Yeah. You will go to jail. Yeah. You're obliged when you're pregnant to um, wear an apron. To, to, yeah. yeah, yeah, and they will send you to jail because yeah. you are not protecting yeah. your future yeah. generations. You are being careless. I found it incredible. Uh, I read it in the And in Russia have got lots yeah. of rules like that to protect school children, mm -hmm. but we are not. The United States, Canada, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, we're taking no precautions. And we are going to get, as it has started, a slow influx of immigration from the countries mm -hmm. and they are getting jobs, being respectful, they are getting the jobs, they are getting the right to vote because they are they're there several years and then they have status, mm -hmm. national status. But it's going to be where all of those countries have all of the status to vote and then they get on the government and the council and there will be no east and west it will then just be one whole generation of chinese and russian mm -hmm. and, and this is what we are we are trying to stop that's why the u.s blocked uh lead paint yeah because it was stopping all the microwave yeah. radiation well, what i'm body. saying to you is um, when we go back to one of our earlier questions is some of the chips put into your cell phones and computers are put there in, in some, sometimes not every single one, but they are put there by the Chinese or the Russians or the Americans. Right. Um, and the first thing I say when somebody who is being targeted rings me up and I can get 10 a day, I say the first thing you must do is throw your cell phone into a bucket of water. And they say, no. <laughs> and I say, well, then forget talking to me because mm. they will know everywhere you are. They will know everybody you've talked to. They will know your health because it can monitor your heartbeat. Mm. They have chips that can monitor the heat in which part of your brain is working. Right. They will know your anxiety state. They will know if you're pregnant. They will know how often you have sex, when you go to the loo. They will know how your sleep pattern is. There is nothing you can do that is not being monitored by your cell phone. By your cell yeah. phone. And There's nowadays, you have smart digits, you have smart things in your telly. Mm -hmm. You have smart boxes like Alexia that pass all the information to them. You have smart radios smart cookers yeah, yeah. um they know every time you put a light switch on everything in your house is no and is relayed and they know everything and um organized crime can tap into this because it's wi-fi mm -hmm. and if it's wi-fi it's easy to pick up all you need is somebody with a van outside your house and a spectroscope and or remote access. Pick up, yeah, yeah and pick I up your ways. Yeah, I got um, diagrams and charts. And it's that. really frightening. What the, They will know everything about you. Mm -hmm. And when people ring up and I say, throw your cell phone into a bucket of water, and yeah. your cell phone is relaying to your chips in your body, and mm -hmm. there are lots of different types of chips um, giving out lots of different types of chemicals, 
and through viruses they can they can infect that particular virus through a, a euglena cell which produces electricity when light or a light ray hits it or magnetic ray hits it and they can send it via the virus to a particular brain cell mm -hmm. and they can cause the viruses to multiply in that part of part of the brain now question okay same thing with the mechanical wave. i'm going to throw you out in three minutes okay <laughs> and then quick question with the mechanical waves they could also produce the three states gas liquid and solid yes how can they make it into an aerosol or <clears throat> they turn it into a plasma okay thank you they, they turn it into a plasma Anything, so, okay, anything, uh, because water is incompressible, um, it's one of the most difficult things to actually compress, mm -hmm. is water, it's why water pistols work, it's why you have tread in your car tyres, um, uh, it's turned into a plasma, mm -hmm. and once it's a plasma, it, it, it will behave like a gas, and you can use it as a gas. Okay, thank you. Thank oh. you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Right, I'm going to throw you out. It's okay. not raining. I need to touch <laughs> your, your, touch your my card to Barry, and I think we'll move we'll okay. in touch. I'll keep that, yeah. Uh, I mean, I hope Amy and uh, Alison could come back. I'm yeah. going back tomorrow. But, uh, Alison has your phone number, right? So if you or, need to contact you for any organizational uh, is, things. Uh, Alison, yes. is yeah, a, yeah. Alison is a pain in the backside. Yeah. <laughs> You've got an untapped brain there, Amy. Yes, yeah, she is brilliant. Untapped, use it. <laughs> You've got a really, really advanced brain there. Um, use it. Uh, use it now for your thinking. I know you are. But, um, you could actually, you're clever enough to get a paper out on this and get it published. The things you've asked me, I would expect a doctoral, in a, in a, in a conversation, in a doctoral setting. But I don't have that model medical degree I don't no, know no, but, 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 but you have the intelligence mm. don't, don't confuse intelligence with knowledge mm. 